the gospel of Christ in Romans is transformational. And I don't use the term uh, lightly. Uh, in fact, really, the first command or imperative of Romans, now there's a couple in chapter 6, but really for 11 chapters, he's just laying the gospel out. And the first command is in, up in chapter 12, and he says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I got to tell you, I'm excited about this because that's really what happened to me. And I'm also a little bit nervous because what I'm launching here, and I'm going to tell you right up front so you can kind of hold me to it, and I know I'll get some heat from you. I'm going to preach through Romans in 16 weeks. <laughs> that wasn't meant to be a punchline, but I kind of figured it might be. <laughs> I was thinking the sweet 16, you know or whatever, and I know it's, it's kind of daunting because uh, when I told Dave I thought I'd do that, he just laughed on the phone. We were on the phone. And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, you said you were going to do that at DBC. And I said, well, oh, yeah, and I remembered about six or eight years ago I decided to do that, and uh, it took me 18, and Dave was laughing. No, really, it took me 54, and Dave was laughing. And actually, obviously, when I preached Romans here uh, 10 or 15 years ago, we, we, like Gary mentioned, I think we have 109 messages that the African pastors are listening to. So I do feel like it's a little bit of a daunting task, but, but at the same time, I really know the value of moving through Romans in 16 weeks. Uh, so I wanted to tell you, I want to take a little time to be personal, if I could, uh, before we get into it. And I don't think this is week one because those guys took all that time. And then 4th of July, and I'm thinking, no, but, um, but I want to tell you a little bit about what God's work in my own life. Um, in 19, it was 40 years ago. When people used to say 40 years, I thought, these guys are over the hill. <laughs> but now I find myself actually looking back. I couldn't believe it was 40 years ago. It was 1971, and I went into a used bookstore in Santa Barbara, California, and I found this, uh, looks like a Bible, and it looks like an old tattered Bible, but 40 years ago, this thing was in pristine condition, black leather, soft, gold, the edges of the pages, and they wanted a buck for it. Well, you know I'm cheap, and so I said, I'll buy it. I didn't even know what it was. It isn't a Bible. It's called the System Bible Study, and I bought it mainly for the cover and the gold. And lest you think I've spent a lot of time in it, that's what happens to a book when it just sits on your shelf for 40 years. It comes, <laughs> the leather dries out. <laughs> it's kind of like our bodies. But uh, it's been basically wallpaper for my office, like most of my books. Uh, I haven't actually spent much time in it, but I'll come back to that because about a year later, I got serious about following Jesus Christ. I'd known the Lord, but it was a turning point. And I was at a large gathering of students in Dallas, Texas, and I got serious about following Christ. And we had optional seminars. There was 85,000 students at this thing in the Cotton Bowl. But around town, there were different seminars, and there was one on how to study the Bible. And so I, I went to it, and it was a large gathering. And Josh McDowell, who was a young evangelist at the time, was going to teach us how to study the Bible. And I don't remember much about it. I remember taking notes, anything he said, because I really wanted to learn how to study the Bible. And I remember one thing he said, never pick up your Bible without a pencil in your hand. As I said, okay. And then he told us how to outline, you know, and that kind of stuff. And so uh, I got back, and I was living in an apartment downtown Portland with a couple of guys that weren't believers. And I remember getting my Bible out, and I remember turning, I think it was to Philippians, and I got the pencil because he said, never take your Bible without a pencil. And I started to outline, you know, and you know how books start. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Is that, is that Roman numeral one? I didn't know how to outline a book. And so pretty soon that kind of went by the wayside like oftentimes things had is I made attempts to study the Bible. 
about a year later, I was a business major at Portland State. And I took a night class. Well, it wasn't a year later. It was really that fall, fall of 72. I took a night class from the founder of Multnomah, John Mitchell. And it was a couple hundred people in the cafeteria. And I sat in the back, and he was 60 years my senior. I was 19. He was 79. And he took that King James Bible and uh, would open it up like that, you know, and teach the Bible like I'd never heard the Bible taught. And his command of the Scripture just, it just, we'd go an hour, and then we'd take a coffee break, and then we'd go another hour every Thursday night, and it became my favorite night of the week. I just loved it. And whatever he said, I listened, and I, it was just, and I noticed his assignments were very simple. He'd tell us to read whatever portion he was teaching several times. Sometimes he'd say, read chapters 1 through 3 six times before next week. And then he'd just feed, and he seemed to, I thought he knew the whole Scripture. It just came out of him. And I saw a Christ-likeness, and, and certainly the 60 years just went away. It wasn't like he had to be relevant to this teenager. It was relevant because it was God's Word speaking to me. And I remember one night he talked about how to study the Bible. And he said, an old guy told me one time, and he gave his name, G. Campbell Morgan. And that kind of rang a bell in my mind because I'd looked this book over, and it wasn't all that interesting, really. It was, it was old and, and lots of different stuff. It's a good book, really. I looked at it this morning. Uh, but there was an article in here, How to Study the Bible, that I'd read. There was one article, How to Study the Bible and How to Teach the Bible, and I was interested in that, and I read it, and I thought I remembered, and it was written by G. Campbell Morgan. And so when Mitchell said that, it kind of triggered my mind, and then I remember him saying, he said, you get into a book and you read it repeatedly. Read it over and over. And so I'd do that, you know. And then he said uh, other things, and I went home, and I got this and looked up that article again, and G. Campbell Morgan said, how to study the Bible, he said, never pick up a pencil <laughs> until you've read a book. And he gave it personally. He said, I never pick up a pencil until I've read it between 30 and 70 times. And I went, 30, 70 times? But I liked it because I don't like pencils. And so I thought, yeah, I tried that other method. That didn't work. And then I listened to Mitchell later, and he challenged us. He said, you know, you get well established in Romans, and you're well established. And he told his own story about hungering for Romans, the book of Romans. And he wasn't teaching Romans, but he just got my heart. And I, it was about November, October, sometime in there. And I went home, and I read Romans, and I realized I'm a slow reader. I can read Romans out loud. I mean, you can just read it. Don't speed read it. You can read it in about an hour. And I could, and I realized, and then he had challenged us to read Romans 50 times, Mitchell had. And maybe you heard Corey mention that. We've talked about that around here. And I thought, well, if I read it every day between now and Christmas, I would have read it 50 times. And so I made a, a deal with myself, and I began to read Romans every day. And at first it was exciting, very exciting. And then I'd kind of ground down. As I said, I read this yesterday, and my mind would wander. But I had this guy that was teaching me the Bible in a way that I wanted to learn. I wanted to know Christ like he knew Christ. And so I persevered, and I found that as I pushed through those times, repeated reading of Romans, it started to make sense. I didn't study it. I didn't have a pencil. I just read it through. And then the next day, I'd read it through again. And I began to understand the argument of Romans. I began to understand the gospel of Jesus Christ. I began to understand the cross. There is no better place to learn the gospel than Romans. And when I'd read it about 20 times, I got Mitchell's little outline and, uh, of Romans. And that helped me because I could, I could see it. 
It wasn't some guy telling me what Romans was. I could see, oh, I can see why. He says what he says about chapters 1 through 3. And I began to hunger for it all the more. And I got to tell you, those 50 days or 60 days, whatever it was, were transforming for me. About 25 times through, I met a Multnomah student. I was at PSU getting a business major, and I met a Multnomah student who said he had a book on Romans, and I'd never, I didn't even know commentaries existed. He had a book by William Newell about that thick on Romans. And he said, and, I, and he, said he was a friend of Mitchell's, and I said, he was? And I was just kind of like awestruck with this man who was teaching me the Bible on Thursday nights. And I said, and he could see it in my eyes. He said, would you like to borrow it? And I said, would you let me? And he said, sure. He said, he kind of careless about it. So I took that book, and I realized, I just glanced at it, and I realized I want one of these. So I went out and bought one, but I waited till I'd read it 50 times before I got into that book. And I still remember when I finished, I was having such good times in the Bible just on my own that I was a little bit gun-shy to even get into that book. And I was afraid it might spoil what was happening, yet I wanted to be taught Romans, and this guy had taught Mitchell, and I thought, man, I want to read that. And I could tell it was a good book. So I made a deal with myself. I'm telling you too much, probably. You're going to think, this guy is crazy. But... Uh, I, I was working and going to school, and I was living in a studio apartment downtown all by myself, and, I, and I'd come home, and I'd put a pot of coffee on, and before I would read Newell's comments on chapter 1, I would force myself to read Romans 1 10 times because I so wanted to make sure I was getting God's Word, not what somebody was saying about God's Word. Because if you've been around much in your Christian life, you know the difference between feeding on stuff and feeding on the stuff, you know. So I would read the chapter 10 times. I'd make little marks. And then I decided, for some reason, I just said, I'm going to copy it out, too. And I just copied out as quickly as I could because I was eager to get into And I got to tell you, I'd do that prep work, and then I'd read Newell. He would teach me Romans chapter 1. And the feasts that I had in that little apartment were so wonderful. I began to teach Romans to anybody who would listen. <laughs> I, our first dates with Chris, that's why I decided she was my gal, because she'd listen <laughs> to a guy who would try to teach her Romans on a date. But <laughs> we had some good times in Romans when I think about it. But... It was life-changing for me, and I've seen this time after time over the years. And that's why I so thrill when I think of what's happening, John Corey's wisdom to take this and challenge men uh, who don't have a lot of training. I didn't have a lot of training. And lots of times, we have way too much stuff. We've got iPods, we've got iPads, we've got everything, you know, and we can click up anything, and we think it's a blessing, and it is, but it can be a curse if we let everybody else do our stuff for us and never get into the book. So I was thrilled when John started telling us. And then when these testimonials came back, and we started hearing that the process, very similar to what I'd gone through 40 years ago, was happening, and the potential for congregational cha challenge and transformation, I, uh, I'm very, very excited. And I thought, you know... What would be better than for us as a congregation, we're done with Joshua, why not take 16 weeks and blitz through Romans? And I was a little gun shy, like I say, because I'm slow nowadays. But I think, you know, I'm eager to do it. And I want to encourage you to sit down and read Romans. If you do it once a week, You'll read it 16 times. And if you were to read it a couple times a week, you can do the math. Three times a week, 48 readings. And I guarantee you that God will use it in your life.